Our gracious Father, we say thank you for allowing us to see another day. And we realize it's not because we've been so good, but because you're a good God. And we say thank you for our last night lying down, for watching over us and keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we thank you for allowing us to see this day that wasn't promised to us. We do not take it for granted. And as we assemble in your house of worship, we give you honor and praise because we know you're worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, how you kept us when we didn't want to be kept, how you kept us when we didn't know we was being kept. Oh, you've been mighty good to us, better than we've been to ourselves, and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us, for providing our needs that you see fit. Thank you, Lord, for activities of our limb, a right mind. Oh, we just bless your name today. Thank you, Lord. Oh, for dying on Calvary Cross. Thank you that you rose on the third day morning with all power in your hand. Oh, teach our soul to say yes to your will, yes to your way. And we ask right now that you hide this thou serve behind the cross. Speak through me and speak for me. Move self out of the way. Have your way in this place. We pray right now that your anointing will just touch every head that's bowed in this place. Oh, Father, you know what we stand in the need of. Oh, we need you right now. We need a word this morning. Oh, we need healing this morning. We need deliverance to take place right now. We need addictions to be set free. Oh, Father, we know that you know what we need, and we know that you're able to do what we need you to do. So we ask right now by the authority of your son, Jesus Christ, that you just lose your power in this place. Oh, that you lose your power that people may be saved. That you lose your power that they may be redeemed. Oh, lose your power that people may be set free. Lose your power. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that we may get in the hurry to do your will. Lose your power that we may tell someone about your goodness. Lose your power, Father. That we may be encouraged to walk on a little further. We say thank you right now. Thank you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Giving all praise to our Heavenly Father, to ministers of the gospel, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. The Lord is truly been blessing us. Amen. And some of us do not realize how good God has been. Amen. He's been mighty good. So we just want to say thank you, Lord, for what, how you brought us and how you've been keeping us. We want to thank the Lord on last night for our appreciation service, for our musicians. Amen. For the encouraging words that went forth. For the word that went forth, for the praise and worship that went forth, we say thank you. Amen. We say thank you that God will continue to bless you. Amen. The Lord is truly moving. Amen. At this place. And we just thank him for his spirit. Thank you for all your work. Amen. Getting the church back together, working together as one in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we thank you. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 through 52, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Mark 10, 46 through 52. It reads, Mark chapter 10, 46 through 52. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man named Bartimaeus, this is the son of Tenemus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Men rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. 
So they call to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see you. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the roadside. Amen. Amen. There, there's a lot of points, uh, amen, that just by reading this, that, that stands out. But I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. When Jesus stopped by. Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor? When Jesus stops by. Amen. You may be seated. It's amazing, my, my brothers and sisters, that all through the Bible, there are many different passages of scriptures that tells when Jesus stops by. Amen. And, and we find that things are never the same after a person has an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Reverend Bruce Robinson noted uh, when he looked at this particular passage of scripture, he says that he first called out as the party comes by, talking about the blind man. When Jesus asked him what he wants, he cut right to the chase. Amen. So many times, my brother and sister, we tried to play ring around the roses with the Lord. Instead of just getting straight to the point. But, but this man, he, he, he cussed right to the chase. There was no bargain position in status. Like James and John. You remember what they were saying? Uh, one wants to be on the right hand when you come into your kingdom. Their mother asked, let one of my sons sit on the right and one on the left. And Jesus says, not mine to give, but the Father in heaven. This man had no bargain chip like James and John who was known as the son of thunder. No tricks, uh, no questions like the Pharisees. You know, oftentimes the Pharisees tried to trip him up. Uh, this man, no plan to the crowd like the rich young ruler mm, who wanted to be sure that everybody knew. Well, remember that he had kept all the commands since he was young. You, you may know the story. He went to Jesus. He said, good master, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? He said, have thou kept the commandment? He said, I have since my youth. But Jesus said, you still lack one thing. He asked, what would they say? Sell all you have. Follow me. The Bible tells us that he, he walked away sad. This, this man, Bartimaeus, is, isn't trying to impress anybody. Not seeking a gold star at the top of his spelling test. Mm. Not wanting to be the greatest in the kingdom, in the common kingdom, or to sit at the right hand of Jesus in his glory. Except my brothers and sisters, he, he wants to be made whole. He, he wants to receive his sight. Yes, my Brothers and sisters, when we look through the Bible itself for what they had learned from listening to others recite, talking about blind people, blind people in that time were literally in the law. Braille had not been invented yet, so they could not read. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they were uh, not respected as religious persons. All day they were protected under the law of Moses. They, they were all so social powerless. And Jesus followed blue, viewed this blind man as an intrusion. Yeah, it's kind of like, you remember when the little children, they, they kept trying to keep the kids from coming to Jesus, and Jesus said, leave them alone. They, they viewed this, this blind man as, as a person that was intruding, that was intruding on, on Jesus. But I want you to understand today that the disciples may have viewed, uh, the disciples may have viewed Jesus follow John into Jerusalem as a raw procession. 
and was foolhardy and impudent to interrupt a raw procession. In other words, they felt like it was wrong for this man to, to and be intruding upon Jesus' procession because this was uh, right before he went to the cross. Mm. But my brothers and sisters, when Jesus stopped by, and I want you to understand today that you have to recognize and realize that only Jesus can help. Can I witness today? Many times we, we live in this world and we look for help from all different places. And I want you to understand, we're looking in the wrong places. We, we try any and everything, every new thing that come on the market, we try. We want to get rich, so we try the newest pyramid scheme. We, we want to lose weight, we try the newest weight method that they say is worth. We want to try everything. And then when we finally realize that all this other stuff will not help us, then we want to turn to the Lord. Yes, you first, you have to recognize and realize that only Jesus can help. What do you mean recognize? In other words, recognize means to identify as something or someone previously seen or known. This man recognized who Jesus was. Not that he had seen him, but because he had heard about what Jesus was able to do. He had read about it and had heard about it. And when you look in the other gospel, you find that uh, it reads that when Jesus was on his way to Jericho, a blind man was here. And then on, when he was leaving from Jericho, this blind man was here. So this blind man may have heard about the other blind men that were healed. And when we hear about what the Lord is doing in somebody else's life, it should cause us to be excited because what God does for someone else, he can do the same for us. We ought to be excited when we hear about God blessing one of our fellow brother, sister, we ought to be excited because, see, God is no respect of person. And just like God bless somebody sitting beside you, he can bless you too. Oh, my brother, sister, we need to recognize who the Lord is. And not only that, I said we need to recognize and then we need to realize and realize we need to grasp or understand clearly who he is. When we realize, when we realize, when we grasp when we truly grasp and I feel that our problem today is many of us have not really grasped who Jesus is. Yes, we have heard stories about him. Tradition, we have come up and through the church, through the rain, sung in the choir, amen, worked on the usher boy, worked on different committees, but how we truly realize who he is, do we really have a personal relationship with him? Oh, when you realize who he is, you realize that he's able to bring you through no matter what you face with in life. When you realize, yeah. oh, my brother and sister, you, when you really have a personal relationship, you know what the old folks said, well, he'll make a way out of no way. Yeah. I don't think anybody understand what I'm talking about. Have you ever been there where there's a way out of no way? Yeah. When you don't see how you're going to make it, how you're going to come through. You didn't see it on your own ability, but some way, somehow, God turned the situation around. Oh, when you recognize, then you realize that only Jesus can help. Oh, when Jesus stops by, the Bible says, my brothers and sisters, that this man was on the roadside bed. Yes, it was all right for a blind man to be. Yet and still he was on the roadside and he was naturally blind. Not only that, but he was spiritually blind. And I want you to ask you a question today. Where were you when you met the Lord? Where were you at when Jesus stopped by? Y'all ain't going to pray with me today. I want you to understand there's something about when the Lord stops by. He will come to you. No matter where you're at, he, he will come to you. Oh, yes, he will. You don't believe that? You ask someone that's been delivered from drugs, won't Jesus stop by a crack house? Oh, hallelujah. You ask somebody that's homeless and living in a motel room, won't Jesus stop by? Oh, you ask someone that's laying on a hospital bed and the doctor say, there's nothing we can do for you. Won't Jesus stop by? He'll meet you where you at. Oh, hallelujah. So many times we feel like we got to clean ourselves up to come to him, but he will come to you. All you have to do is be willing. Oh, 
want to invite him in. This man was on the roadside, blind and big. Not only was he begging, but he was blind. That was a catch 22. Not only was he blind, but he was begging on the roadside. Yes, my brothers and sisters, but we have to understand my next point is when you hear Jesus, you need to call out to him. What are you saying? Well, when the Spirit of God began to impress the Lord on you, that's God calling out to you. That's God seeking you, trying to draw you near to him. You need to call out to Jesus. So many times we let our situation and circumstances tell us to be quiet. Mm -hmm. We let our friends and family tell us to just shut up. We let the devil tell us that you're making too much noise. But oh, I stop to tell you today, it's time for us to make some noise for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't need a whole lot of people to cry out for the Lord. Can I get a witness today? So many times we let our situations quiet us. We lose a job, we get quiet on the Lord. When they talk about a layoff, we get quiet. Mm -hmm. When our finances are down, we get quiet. Yes, my brothers and sisters. When it look like we can't go on no further, we get quiet on the Lord. When we're having problems in our marriages, we get quiet on the Lord. Then they say, don't take all that. You don't need to pray. You sure don't need to praise. And you sure don't need to shout. But I tell you that you need to shout out a little bit loud. Jesus! This is what he said. You ought to know, you ought to realize and recognize that you can call on Jesus. Have anybody here ever called on him? Have you called on him? When you couldn't call on nobody else? Have you ever called on him? I don't know about you today, but I done called him late in the midnight hour. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may call family and friends. The pastor may not answer his phone. Your friends may not answer their phone. Some may even forward it to voicemail. But I want you to understand today that you can always call on the Lord. Yes, you can. And he will always hear your cry. So this man realized and he recognized that Jesus was his only solution. They told him to be quiet. Be quiet, old man. Don't you see the masters coming through? Just be quiet. Why don't you be quiet? You just an old blind beggar. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with you. But wait a minute. I just heard that there was another blind man that was healed. Good God Almighty. Whatever situation that you're in today, whether it's drugs or alcohol, you heard the story of somebody else that God had delivered. You ought to know that God could deliver you too. If you're sick in your body, you heard somebody else had been healed from their sickness. You ought to know that God can heal you too. Won't God do it? So this man said, wait a minute. Don't keep me from getting my blessing. I'm so many times I'm required and don't want to get our blessing. I'm we let stuff in people keep us from getting our blessing. But well, this man said, wait a minute. Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Yes, my brothers and sisters. I'm, then I heard the Lord. He stopped by. That was amazing. It's amazing. When the Lord stopped by, he don't care where you've been. He don't care where you're coming from. He don't care where you're going. But he'll ask you a question. Do you want to be made whole? And I want you to understand today that the reason that a lot of people are not made whole is because they don't want to be made whole. 
they like they they like their condition um, they like the situation um, that they're in uh, but in order to be made whole um, you must have a desire that I want to be made whole um, is there anybody here today that have a desire that I want to be made whole uh, I want deliverance uh, I want joy I want peace uh, I want rest uh, Ah, yeah, this man, Jesus asked him a question. What do you want, good God Almighty? He said, I want to see, good God Almighty. Some of us today, we ought to tell the Lord that we want to see. And the reason a lot of people don't want to see, they want to stay spiritual blind. is because they have an excuse to do what they want to do. If they're spiritual blind, uh, but you ought to make a decision today uh, that I want to see uh, what God has for me. Uh, I want to see uh, my shortcomings. Uh, I want to see uh, my faults. Uh, I need to see the Lord. Uh, but I told you, my brothers and sisters, uh, good God of mine, when Jesus stopped by, things begin to change. Uh, the Bible says. Uh, that this man say I want to see my sight uh, and he began to see uh, it's amazing uh, that a lot of us uh, when the Lord does something for us uh, we go on by our way uh, we don't want to come to church no more uh, we make a promise uh, Lord if you bring me through if you give me off my sick bed uh, if you give me another job uh, if you help me keep my house uh, if you repair my marriage, uh, if you fix my car, uh, if you fix my situation, uh, I will follow you. Uh, but I found out uh, that a lot of people uh, make false promises. Uh, but this man, uh, after he received his sight, uh, began to follow Jesus. Uh, good God of mine, uh, I want you to understand today uh, when Jesus stopped by, things began to happen. Uh, he stopped by. Uh, Good God of mine, uh, a poor one day, uh, there was a man uh, that had been sick uh, for 38 long years. Uh, Jesus asked him a question, uh, would thou be made whole? Uh, the Bible says uh, that he leaped up uh, and began to walk uh, when Jesus stopped by. Uh, that man uh, began to rise. Uh, I heard uh, when he stopped by. Uh, the tomb of Lazarus. Uh, he said, Lazarus, uh, come for. Uh, I want you to understand now uh, that those dead situation uh, that you have in your life, uh, he's able uh, to call them out uh, and call in life. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, yes, he will. Uh, when Jesus stopped by, uh, it caused uh, a short man in stature uh, to climb a sycamore tree. Uh, and I heard. Uh, the Lord said, Zacchaeus, come down, for I'm going to dine at your house. When Jesus stopped by, it'll cost a tax collector to change his way and give back what he has taken. Not only that, but give back a double portion. When Jesus stopped by, good God of mine, when he stopped by, they called the out daughter to come back alive didn't he do it when Jesus stops by they call a woman daughter to be made whole when Jesus stops by it calls ten lepers to be healed and I heard one came back and said thank you Lord when Jesus when Jesus stops by it called a man that had been in fellowship in a tomb with dead folks that were possessed with demons when jesus stopped by it caused that man to be healed then god do it yes he did won't he stop by won't you let him stop by won't you let him stop by things will never be the same if you let him stop by won't you let him in your house today? You'll never be the same. Won't you let him in? 
Won't you let him in so many times? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So many times. We want to invite people over our house. Anybody ever been there? You invite folks over to your house for a little fellowship. But when you invited them, you didn't realize how dirty your house was. So at the last minute, you run around trying to clean up the house before company comes because you don't want them to see how dirty your house is. And there are some people here today, Jesus trying to stop by. He's trying to visit your house. And you still trying to clean it up. You're trying to sweep stuff into the run of the rug. Trying to hide skeletons in the closet. But I want you to understand today, he's not concerned about how dirty the house is. He's not concerned about the stuff under the rug. He's not concerned about the skeletons in the closet. He wants your heart. Won't you give it over to Jesus today? And won't he make a change? Won't he make a change? I know he will. Where were you at? On your roadside when you met the Lord. Where was you at when he came into your life? Where were you at when Jesus stopped by? When Jesus stops by. Things won't be the same. And we let him stop by. Some of us have let the Lord stop by to re receive salvation. But oh, when he want to stop back by again for a visit. Un uh, unannounced visit. You know, sometimes we don't like when people just pop up at the house, ain't called, ain't Ain't warned you or nothing. Jesus said, you know, I stopped by that day when you was searching. When you was going through, I stopped by and I saved you. I turned your life around. Place your feet on solid ground. But every now and then, I just want to stop by and see how things are going with you. And many of us know that a house ain't in all this raggedy. And when we look out the window or through the peephole and see it's Jesus, we, we won't answer the door. We won't let him in. We won't let him in, but I'd stop to tell you, things change when Jesus stopped by. If we would just acknowledge, Lord, I come short. I need you right now. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to deliver me. I need you to make me whole. If we would just let him in. How many times we trying to wrestle and fight stuff? When I stop doing this, when I stop doing that, when I get myself together, then I come to the Lord. I want you to know you can't get yourself together. You're lying to yourself. Your flesh cannot please God. It's going to take the power of the Spirit of God to clean you up. It's going to take His Spirit to clean you up and turn you around. It's going to take His Spirit to keep you clean. You can't do it. If you can do it, then you wouldn't need Jesus. None of us would need Jesus. So I want you to understand. Stop lying to yourself. Say, self, stop lying to me. You can't do it. But it takes his power. It takes his power. It takes his power. Oh, we don't realize how much power we have. That same power. Oh, hallelujah. That's one of they say, you shall be empowered to be my witness. That shall be an explosion in your life when my spirit come upon you. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to do some things that you can't ordinary do. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to say some stuff you wouldn't ordinary say. You, you're going to go some places you wouldn't ordinary go. Oh, when you got my power in you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus wants to use us today. Oh, hallelujah. When the Lord stops by. When Jesus stopped by, things began to change. Things began to change. Lord, I surrender all to you. 
I surrender all. I surrender all. I can't do it. This man had heard about it. And I know us today, we have heard about it. Who in here has heard about Jesus? About his power? I'm not just talking about what's he wrote down in the word, but have you heard about what he had done in first life? Have you heard about what he had done in your family life, in your friends' life? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did yesterday, he can do today, he can do tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day.